Hello there everybody, Sam Strains here, welcome back to the railway and welcome back to the Model Railway news. Here we are in June and there is a lot of news for this month. All of it is pretty interesting and some of it is pretty controversial. So sit back, relax, I hope you enjoy it. We're going to kick off with Hornby and actually this is the controversial part because finally we have an explanation as to why so many orders from select retailers have not been fulfilled. And according to a press release from Hornby, they've introduced a new tier system. It's like a government-inspired model railways lockdown. And yes, it is more or less as ridiculous as it seems. So basically, this tier system places each Hornby stockist into one of three tiers. Tier 1 retailers have a clean, well-laid-out store, and they stock several, if not all, of Hornby's ranges, and they also provide help and guidance to various customers. And then, by contrast, Tier 3 retailers may not have bricks-and-mortar premises, they may have poorly laid-out or untidy stores, they may deal mainly online, or they may manufacture their own branded model railway items, which might possibly conflict with those produced by Hornby. And if you ask me, I think it is that last point that is the crux of the issue here because I can't understand how a tier system specifically would be necessary to help solve Hornby's demand or distribution problems. That being said, if that is the problem, I've got some advice for Hornby here. Why don't they spend a little bit less time faffing around producing fake Lego that nobody asked for and spend a little bit more time on producing products that people actually want to buy and making sure there's enough of them to go around. Now, don't get me wrong, I love Lego, but if I was going to buy a Lego set, there's a pretty good company out there that does a rather good job of producing Lego already. Hmm, what's that company called? Oh yes, Lego. Anyway, back to the point. Tier 2 retailers are going to be somewhere in between the two that I've just described. So Tier 1 retailers are going to receive priority on deliveries, which of course suggests that Tier 2 and Tier 3 stockists will not. And Hattons, presumably because of their competing ranges, even though the Genesis range was underway before Hornby started producing theirs, or even before they started announcing theirs, and even though the Class 66 is just not in the same league as Hornby's, I don't know, they appear to be in Tier 3, which of course explains why so many of their orders have been cancelled, and in fact in some cases they they have received zero of Hornby's more popular releases. Not only does this suck because it will reduce customers' choices, it will shrink the hobby and it will strangle any businesses brave enough to start producing their own models, it's also really irritating that Hornby appear to have tried to keep this from us since January. Back in April, when I emailed them to try and find out what was going on, they also failed to mention it. I posed them five very simple but very direct questions and guess what? In their response, they failed to answer a single question. All they did manage to mention was, we ensure all our retailers are allocated a fair proportion of stock, which I'm fairly certain Tier 3 stockists will not agree with. They also managed to mention twice that they couldn't pass comment on a retailer's ordering system and how they sold models. Now, I was not asking them to pass comment on how retailers run their stores. I know that it wasn't the retailers to blame, because from Hattons, for instance, I've had no problems with other brands. It's only Hornby stuff. And it's only now that they appear to be coming clean about it, now that AJM Railways blew the whistle on them with a big post about it on their website. Hornby then went on to offend the entire LGBTQ community when they revealed that none of the proceeds from their recent Pride Wagon were actually going to be donated to Pride-related causes. It wasn't until this blew up big time on Twitter that they changed their minds and are now saying that they do intend to donate some of the proceeds. It's just a pity they didn't make this decision before it hit the news because now it looks like they've done it to save face rather than for the right reasons. So Hornby are upsetting quite a lot of people at the moment. They're making a lot of poor decisions and they might have had a good year but they're still a fragile company who cannot afford to bite the hand that feeds them. Anyway, moving on, let's take a look at the Hornby Engine Shed blog for this month. As you can see, there is a lot of Pride stuff on here, an awful lot, which shows just how much they were hoping to cash in on Pride Month. The Pride Wagon really was just the tip of the iceberg. Hopefully they will be donating the proceeds from these other products too. It might be worth getting Hornby to clarify this because that way this massive range might actually benefit some people besides just Hornby, of course. Slightly more positively, they have showed off some brand new P2 cans that have been reworked to include even more detail since the last time we saw them. 
And even though this is just a great render of the model, you can see that in terms of detail, this already is going to be a huge improvement over the previous P2 that Hornby produced. There's also a sneak preview of the streamlined P2 CAD as well, which is absolutely fascinating, isn't it? I mean, the front end just looks like an A4. You could believe that was an A4, but then the boiler looks just like a P2 boiler. It really does look incredibly strange, if you ask me. Next up then, it's the first of quite a lot of new wagons that have been announced over this month. Seriously, this is pretty awesome. First up, it is Acura Scale, and they have announced a brand new family of wagons, the MGR Coal Hoppers and the CDA China Clay Hoppers, of which over 10,000 were produced in real life from the 1960s to the 1980s. Now there was a huge range of variations and detailed differences between these 10,000 wagons in real life, which has led to a frankly ridiculous 23 different packs being made available from Acura Scale eventually, which are actually due at the end of this year, which shows just what an incredible and again slightly ridiculous undertaking this project is. Decorated samples have already been shown off and a pack of three is priced at £74.95, which is about £25 per wagon considerably less than something I'm going to be talking about a little bit later on. So yeah, pretty cool stuff. Good to see Acura Scale are still going strong and announcing lots of new stuff. Next up, some great news from Oxford Rail. The J27 is a steam locomotive that we have been waiting for for absolutely ages. For obvious reasons, it has been delayed, but apparently it is on the way and it's going to be arriving over the next week from the time of filming this video. And this video is going out a few days after I filmed it. So there's a good chance, there's a real chance that the J27 will be in stock at the time of this video going out. So if you're interested, I will include a link down in the description. That's not all though, because they've showed off some decorated samples already for their Great Eastern Goods fans, which suggests that these projects are nearing completion too, which is very exciting. Same with the pilchard wagons as well. These are early decorated samples, don't get me wrong, I don't expect these are going to be hitting the shops next week or anything, but the livery here totally transforms the wagon from its undecorated form, if you ask me. Yeah, suddenly those wagons are working, aren't they? They look really, really good. So lots of great news from Oxford Rail. Awesome to hear that their projects are still progressing. Next up, some very exciting news from Rails of Sheffield, who have said that they will be starting to dispatch their brand new and highly anticipated SECR Wainwright D-Class over the next week or so, which of course means that the models are finished and ready to go. Now they have estimated that it's going to take around two weeks to get all of the orders dispatched, so do hang tight and enjoy the models when you get them. As you can see from the photos that have been shared already, they do look absolutely stunning. Next up, a brand new announcement. Yes, we've got it all this month. This time from Rapido Trains, who have announced two brand new wagons. And they are continuing the pre-grouping craze with the SECR 5 and 7 plank open wagons in a selection of different liveries and detailed differences, as you can see. The models appear to be incredibly high spec based on what Rapido have shown already, but they do come at a frankly ridiculous price of £32.95 each. And bear in mind, even Backman's five plankers, which are also expensive, come in at less than £20 RRP. So yeah, that's an awful lot of money for a wagon. Not sure what to expect from a wagon, a five or a seven planker at that sort of price, but I guess only time will tell. Me personally, I'm glad that I designed my own literally a few days before Rapido announced theirs. I couldn't believe it, but yeah, I don't know, 30 quid plus, maybe, maybe it's worth it. I don't know. Rapido have surprised me before, so I'm being careful not to just poo-poo this because who knows, it could actually be one of the greatest wagons ever produced. That's a real possibility with Rapido, isn't it? Let's finish off then with a few poll results. First of all, I asked you guys whether you'd like to see me review one of Hornby's new Sentinels. 69%, nice, voted for the Hitachi one, so I think if I do review one of the new Sentinels, that is the one I might go for. For my 100,000 subscriber celebrations, thank you so, so much. I asked you folks what you would like to see me do to celebrate that milestone, and 42% actually voted for me to create some custom Sam's Trains models, and to do so, I did actually buy a 3D printer, which is very exciting. If you want to see how that went, I'll put a link up there. But there were some other great suggestions that came in, so who knows, I might try some of these as well as the years go on. During my review of the infuriating Helgen Class 17, I asked you folks what type of coupling you most preferred to use. And as expected, here are the results. 
84% chose the NEM tension lock couplings, which are fitted by every other manufacturer in this country as far as I know, and with a sample size of over 2,500 people, that's pretty good evidence I would say that Helgen did make the wrong call by fitting all of that annoying buffer beam detail and supplying the NEMs separately. Anyway, enough of that. Thank you very, very much for joining me for yet another episode of the Model Railway News. As always, if I missed out something that you think deserves a mention, do comment it down below and I will consider it for next month. For now though, you look after yourselves, you continue to stay safe, obviously enjoy your modelling and do share with me what you've been up to. I do always love to see that. But I will see you next time for another review or something. You take care, see you on the next one. Cheers folks.